I understand, and this isn't officially confirmed, that the Prime Minister is putting a little bit of pressure on Mr Mercer to do precisely what the judge is asking. Just talk us through, if you could, um, where you part company with that line, as it were. From what I take it, you have a, a different position on this. A judge has said to Mr Mercer, we want the names of people that have given you this information about executions. That's broadly what we're talking about here. Mr Mercer has said no, and you're backing the Armed Forces Minister. Um, yes, I am. Uh, the point really being is that the information which was given to Johnny Mercer, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, uh, has been passed completely to the inquiry. So the inquiry has got that information available to it. Now, the reason why Johnny Mercer does not want to give the names of those who gave him the information is because he wants to respect the principle of whistleblowers uh, having the right and the freedom and the opportunity to bring their concerns forward to a responsible person, like a government minister, that information to be passed on, but to have their identities protected. And that's the point of principle on which Johnny Mercer is standing. And I think he's right. Mm. And it's a point of principle across a number of areas, of course, as you rightly say, uh, when it comes to whistleblowers, we, we've talked a lot about how people don't come forward precisely because of things like this and other potential threats to careers and livelihoods, etc. Uh, but also, you know, even in terms of you know, how the journalistic system of the world works, you know, people do trust and pass on information and do so with the um, explicit belief and understanding that it's confidential and that information was only handed over because it's sensitive and it was only handed over with the guarantee of anonymity. And I think when the stakes are as high as this, Mr Mercer would have been really acting with all of the above in mind. Yes, well, that's where he parts company with uh, the inquiry um, and parts company with the thought that if he does pass the names across, that they will remain confidential. Um, the fact of the matter is the individuals concerned uh, approached Johnny Mercer a, a while ago, gave him critical information, which he has passed on, and frankly, it's helped the inquiry make a lot of progress uh, in its investigations. And I, mean, I think one has to respect Johnny's position. Um, he has done more as the Minister of State for Veterans Affairs than any minister has done for veterans over quite so many years. And he really should be respected for that. And for this to become a public spat between a judge and a government minister on an issue which, frankly, is an issue of principle. The substance isn't there. The information's already been passed across to the inquiry frankly, is unacceptable. It's public grandstanding on both sides. To be honest, I think the way to solve this one is for the judge and the minister to sit down quietly in a room together and have a conversation. Yeah. That, that, um, that, that would be the, the grown-up way to go forward. Grandstanding in the media is not the way to go yeah, forward. Yeah, I, I think that sounds absolutely spot on. Let's just bring Rob back in. Rob Merrick, uh, the journalist, is with us in the studio as well. I suppose the counter to all of that, I tend, tend to agree with Lord Dannett, but the counter would be, hang on a second, we're talking about an accusation of British soldiers killing people um, and, and innocent civilians, is, mm. I sense, is no, the allegation serious. here. Therefore, this, is, this mm. goes above the normal rules of whistleblowing. Um, that's what Mr Mercer is being asked to do as the Veterans Minister, then, you know, that information he should pass on. He's a member of the government. He's been given information of um, some pretty dire allegations, and that should be followed up. I think you can understand why the judge, why the inquiry wants to be able to speak to these people itself, rather than simply relying on what looks like third-hand information. I suppose it's not really clear to me why Johnny Mercer doesn't trust the inquiry to keep the names confidential. I, you may have good reasons. I don't know what they are. Um, sort of stepping back from trying to argue the rights and wrongs and just thinking about what's going to happen, mm. it was interesting to see just what a pickle, really, Downing Street was in this morning when it was answering or <laughs> failing to answer questions about this. Of course, it had to say that its position was that people must, should comply with public inquiries. It then tried to say, oh, we're not going to talk about the specifics of the Mercer case. But of course, we do need to talk about the specifics of the case because he's only got 10 days to decide what to do. And of course, the, the public position of the government has to be, you must comply with the law, with the, an order given by a public inquiry. So at the moment, it's quite hard to see how, the, sure. how he wriggles out of it. But I, I suppose, Lord Dannett, it would be argued that, you know, even judges sometimes get it wrong and, and perhaps are um, re requiring a witness to come forward with something that is way out of their own jurisdiction. Well, and that's, is that well, possibly the case here? 
Well, if you listen to um, Justice Haddon Cave um, talking to Mr. Mercer in the inquiry, uh, he focused on the point um, of protecting Mr. Mercer's integrity. Now, of course, integrity is a really important thing to preserve, but the judge had missed the point of what Johnny Mercer is standing on, and that is the principle of whistleblowers having the confidence to come forward to people that they trust to pass valued information on. And that's what's happened here. And the inquiry has benefited from the information that uh, Johnny Mercer has passed on to them. And, and let's face it, Johnny Mercer has, as I said just now, done more for veterans than any other minister for a very long time. Um, the I Iraq historic uh, accusations trial, the IHAT whole procedure, he managed to get that squashed. He, he has done a lot for veterans. And mm. there are big principles that he's standing on. And I think the judge, dare I say it, and, and I think the minister need to sit down quietly and have a discussion and come up with a sensible conclusion on this. I think it would be an outrage if the judge insisted on his position mm. and Johnny Mercer was to either be sacked, fined, or indeed mm. go to prison. Indeed. That would be truly outrageous yes, that, for that... a government servant who has looked after veterans magnificently. I, I agree. If you put yourself in that position, though, Lord Dannett, I mean, you, you're the former head of the British Army, a much respected one as well, I should say, but if had you uh, been given information pertaining to some malfeasance or some criminal activity, or in this case, the execution, that word is being used, of, of innocence by your men, uh, would you pass that information on? Would you have sat on it? What would be... How, how would you deal with that? Because that's precisely the position well, you're, that you're getting to the heart, found himself in. You're, you're getting to the heart of this inquiry. The answer, of course, is that if you have got information that's been passed on to you, which would appear to uh, substantiate acts of wrongdoing, then there's an absolute obligation on you to pass it on to the uh, respective investigative authorities uh, and let uh, an investigation run its course. Um, just sitting on something. We had so many cases, um, not just in the military environment, but in many other environments where people were thinking they'd done the right thing by sitting on information that they should have passed on, mm. and then the situation just becomes worse. No, if you're given information, then you pass it on and let the proper investigatory authorities use that in the best way possible. And that's what Johnny Mercer has done. The only issue here is protecting the anonymity of those whistleblowers in order that other people can have confidence to come forward in future to be whistleblowers. Yeah, indeed. It's the whistleblowers, not the accused, of course, that's at the, uh, the centre of this. And that's the, that's the crucial distinction. Lord Dannett, it's always a pleasure uh, to gauge your views on these things. It's